Let's see what goes on. Hopefully nothing too destructive. And... Yes! That is good. We are live. Well, yep. And thank you. Exiting host mode. Alright, well, hello and welcome to Ever 17 with the Blood Hero Taku. Of course, this is the regular Friday chill stream, although I'm not really sure if chill stream is going to be a part of what I'm going to be trying to do, especially with what has happened over the past... 14 hours in relation to the internet issues I've been having because quite literally the response I got from my ISP is absolutely shocking and absolutely dumbfounding so much so that I thought I'd actually lost a few brain cells in the process Because, well, the engineer decided to tell them, tell them I had a significant IT equipment, or specific IT equipment here. Which, if you count my Raspberry Pi, which is hardly ever on, the printer, which is hardly ever on, the, the fireport switch that's off over there, which I've already ruled out, plus the two computers that have actually been working since well before this started happening, they're now asking me to pull everything off the network. And I think that is utterly dumbfoundly stupid! Well, no more of that ranting, this is supposed to be a chill stream! So, let us continue on with what happened last week, because we are still... We're actually still missing one character. Because we are still missing Sara Matsunaga. Alright, so let's hit this go, and... Oh. I took my PDA from my pocket and checked the time. There were 17 minutes until the time Sora had said. I wonder where I should hit next. Hmm. I think I'm going to do the visitor elevator because I think that might be where Sora is. Ah, bollocks. Uh, hang on. File menu, load. Let's try that again. I continue to the next corridor. In the... Continue to the next corridor. In the corridor, I hung a left. I went to the far... Went in the far door, which was open. Huh? Where am I? I had been aiming for the elevator, but wound up somewhere else. The sign said "Qual." I had no clue what that meant. Reading the explanation, I learned that this was a gondola in the shape of a jellyfish. I wasn't particularly in the mood for a ride. I checked to see that there was no damage to the floors or the walls and left. The elevator was next to the jellyfish gondola. Oh. Sugumi was standing there silently. She was in front of the closed elevator doors with a stern look on her face. So this is where you were. Uh... It didn't look like Sugumi had noticed me, but she didn't reply. Had noticed me, but she didn't reply. Her eyes stay stayed fixed on the door. This elevator doesn't go to the surface. I was reading a nearby sign. It says that you should go to the floating island in Selnal. Get floating as far as in Selnal. We should use the elevator in the centre of the floor. 
Hey, Sugumi, just standing there isn't gonna make the elevator come. Sugumi finally answered me. So what? As soon as she said that, she placed her head on the closed elevator doors and started prying them apart. And a uh, hand on the closed elevator doors and started prying. The door was stopped half open. I thought it might be broken. Sugumi looked inside. Scared, I peeked in. Oh, that's the one we rode down in. A little box in the abyss. The elevator was about was about set twenty yards down. I thought that the floors were fairly far apart, but, it, but I didn't realise actually how far. Oh, excuse me, someone gave me a little push on my shoulder from behind. Don't push. What do you think would have would happen if I fell from here? <laughs> Sugumi <laughs> said it without a trace of emotion. Jeez, why do you want to go and try to try to scare me? Sugumi pulled on the doors, putting them back in their original positions. Let's be sure I tapped on the elevator button a couple of times. There's no response. The lamp didn't light up. Doesn't look like it's getting any power. Yes. 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 Silence was the rule for a while. Sugumi rarely talked. She only said the minimum necessary. I thought that maybe she was trying to be careful of me for some reason. I wondered what it could be. I wanted to know. Hey, why don't you tell me what happened? That might have been true, but still. it's go It's got nothing to do with me. It's got something to do with me. Hey, you know something I don't. Like about this accident. Like maybe something... Something to do with the reason you're all quiet. What makes you say that? Sugumi gave me a strange look. Well, maybe, I guess. Like everything is just too neat. We can't communicate with the outside and our escape routes are all closed. But we've got electricity and the air conditioning still works. It's almost like someone trapped us here on purpose. Hmm. Sugumi's expression loosened into a slight smile. It was a provocative smile. What do you mean by that? What? <laughs> this chick. I'd love to tell her what I really think of her. That thought ran through my mind. I thought that could really make me look stupid, so I resisted the urge. Sugumi's expression returned to normal. Huh? 
Oh, what about you then, Sugumi? <coughs> Sugumi looked upward. The ceiling was covered with artificial materials. It felt oppressive. She laughed again. Then she left, disappearing down the corridor, and I was alone. Jellyfish gone to the dark well. Situation normal. Elevator out of order. Hmm. Infirmary. Arrived in front of the infirmary. Oh, that. Oh, this was a theme park. It all. It was also deep in the ocean and had other facilities. The moon's atmosphere was maintained using a mix of gases at an air pressure different from the outside world. It seemed that it could make some people feel ill. I reckoned that it was the reason this room was so large. Beyond the huge sliding door was a room decked out in elaborately in shiny new medical equipment. I thought it could be something to do with Lemu's sponsor being a major pharmaceutical company. The building was so clean and white it was nearly blinding. There were two normal beds and one that looked like it was for surgery. There was also a huge machine attached to one of them. LMRI was written on it. I don't know what it was but it looked like it was some kind of scanner. I saw a shelf in the wall fitted with medical tools and medicine. It was probably in case people, f in case somebody fell ill or got injured here. It wouldn't be possible to move anyone outside, so they'd have to be treated here. Mm. I was getting used to surprises, but the voice startled me. I didn't know who was talking. But somebody sure was. It sounded like Coco. Well, I don't know who she was talking to. I couldn't tell where they were. What was she saying? I wondered if something had happened to Coco. I carefully inched toward the rear of the room. I noticed a squarish hole cut out of the floor. I peered down inside. Inside there was a small elevator stopped. It, appla <sighs> it appeared that there was that there was another room directly below the infirmary. The voice was coming from there. I pushed the button. When the lift came, I jumped in. It descended slowly and silently. I arrived below. I noticed that the hatch was slightly ajar. I eased, clo I eased closer and opened the hatch. Who are you talking to? Coco jumped as if she'd just been if she'd been stung. She was sitting on the bed. Nothing looked out of the ordinary. Uh, Saki Pion! Safe place, Paco Pon! Uh, I know the Neko Song 17. But it's not Pion Pion, it's Pokopon, right? Coco huh? pointed to herself as she said her name. Then she pointed at me. A puppy face peeked out from under the bed. Oh, nice to meet you too. But haven't we already introduced ourselves? I returned upstairs with Coco. So you're calling me Takepion, that is that it? Mm. 
Alright, I got it. So who are you talking with, Coco? Wasn't someone just in that room? Whatever. I didn't think Coco would lie to me. There wasn't anyone else around. Infirmary. Situation normal. And last destination, the warehouse. There's a room with no sign indicating what it was for. It caught my curiosity and I decided to have a look. It appeared it was a warehouse of some kind. There were loads of boxes made of reinforced plastic all piled up. There was a pushcart and boxes too big to carry, and some long and narrow that a, pers that a person could just hold. There were all kinds of marks, symbols and letters on the boxes, and I couldn't make sense of them. There were a bunch of round carbon capsules and drum-like looking objects. I wondered what was inside them. I figured I didn't really need to know. I really didn't really need to know. There's a hissing noise coming from somewhere. Looking for the sound led me to an air conditioner that was in bad shape, but still working. On the room ceiling was a crane complete with guide rails. One container was still suspended from above. It looked like it had been abandoned in the middle of work. No one had any time to clean up. Everyone had fled at once. Hey, is anyone here? I called out once, but nobody answered. There's no reason why anyone would be here. There was no reply. Warehouse. Situation normal. Now, I took my PDA from my pocket and looked at the time. Oh no. We were only two minutes late, but still, we were late. I jogged towards the security office. Coco and Pee, Pee were close behind me. We went in through the sliding door. <laughs> you were standing like a guard in a narrow entranceway. The kid was next to her. Sorry, my bad. I was late. <laughs> Don't get so mad. It's only two minutes, give or take. <laughs> yep. She has a go at Takeshi for being late, but not Coco. You're still treating her a lot different than me. Sora looked up from the material and smiled. She walked towards us. So everybody's here. What about Tsugumi? Tsugumi was leaning against, leaning against the lockers on the far side of the room. Sora gave us a lecture about the structure of Lemu. フロアを1つ降りれば17メートル深くなります。従って3階ドリットシュトックは水深 
ドリッドの外は約5気圧の水圧プラス大気圧1気圧で合計約6気圧の圧力がかかっています仮にドリッドから突然海中に出てしまった場合肺が6分の1に押しつぶされるかまたは肺溶石の6分の5の海水が肺に流れ込んでおそらく数分以内に絶命するでしょう Yeah, I got a question. I've heard that skin divers can dive to depths of about 30 meters. Can somebody just tough, up, tough out the water pressure on the way up? Free diving is a very good thing. I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I'm going to go しかしその場合、肺に送り込むエアーは高圧のガスを用います。素潜りの場合は息を止めて潜るわけですが、素人だったら20メートルが限界ですね。それ以上になると熟練が必要になります。Oh, is that right? それから大事なことがもう一つ。仮に5気圧の水圧に耐えられたとして。クラナリさんあなたは5 1メートルも上にある海面まで泳ぎ切ることができるでしょうかえ、yeah, and again do forgive the errors in the scripting unfortunately to repeat myself the company that actually translated this no longer exists so、uh, I couldn't even get a patch to actually fix all the text errors. You're making fun of me. Hey, I may not look like it, but in high school I swam a mile. So, I'm going to go to the next one. 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 泳いで登るのと同じことです。うん。うん、satisfied and satisfied。うん、swimming a fifty-story building。that was insanity。Even from Zoy to stop the de at a depth of 34 meters, that would be about 10 stories. Just climbing that would be a bear. And besides, how would one get outside of Lemu in the first place? Yeah, you're right. That's something that just guts alone couldn't get you through. I nodded. <laughs> そうです。皆さん、もう一つ申し上げにくいのですが、お知らせがあります。レミューと外部をつなぐ通信系統について、先ほどから調査を継続、回復を試みていましたが、すべてのケーブル通信、電波通信、ネットワーク接続の機能は、物理的断線や施設の浸水、故障によって使用不能。Uh, mm, all cable and radio network functions are down due to malfunctions, specifically several cables are flooding. Are ありません。報告終わります。Two hours had passed. There was no sign of help. If there were people up on the floating island. Yep, floating island. At least they could. At least they could do was send someone to check on us. I was trying to be upbeat about things, but with the first floor flooded and the partition shut, no one's going to be coming through there. And coming through the ocean, that seemed even more impossible. 
The flooding of Lamu had disrupted the flow of the currents around it. It would be hard for a diver or a small submersible to get anywhere near it. We left behind the security officer that reeked of smoke and going in front of the souvenir stand. I just finished my 34th match against PP, and I'd lost 34 times. It was a pretty one-sided affair. Is there any way that PP could lose? First off, you're the one who's making PP's face all funny. I can't make faces that crazy by myself. Besides, I don't know how to make a dog laugh, so it's not really fair. I wonder if it was really just getting, it was really just getting used to it. Well, I, I'll just have to admit the feet, kid. It, it, yeah, the feet. Kid, wanna take my place? Yeah, I'm begging you. I'll be the referee. The kid had been talking with you, but he came over. Sora, who appeared taken with the game, also came over. It's a staring contest, Canine versus Human. Sora covered her mouth with her hand and giggled. Actually, Peepee is incredible. I think I'm gonna have nightmares about this. I shuddered. And now, in their first contest, we have the champion Peepee -Pee versus the challenger, the kid, facing off in a face fight. I want to get underway, but first. <laughs> well, I think we need to decide what we're gonna call the kid here. Is kid okay? What do you think? <laughs> Kiddo, huh? You want me to call that, call you that too? That's got to be more normal name than. It's, it's got to be a more normal name than that, John. <laughs> it's a little random. I don't like John Doe. <laughs> Well, it's only for a little while, so it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> yep. That's an even big bigger tongue twister than you's actual name. And it just keeps on going and going. That's too long. Anything longer? <laughs> Anything longer than you may see how kind of Tanaka is out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And he just got you rattled. <laughs> Annoyed. You, who have been standing over by the shop, came walking directly toward me. 
Ah, what a pain. Nor the mascot I name you Carl Mune of Hamburger. Oh, Mune of Hamburger. Ugh. And I've actually got glasses on. But then again, this is... But then again, this is an 8... 800 by 600 window I'm looking at <laughs> and the text isn't very well sometimes isn't that legible because Windows 10 ランボーですね。クラナリさん。そうですね。私も一つ考えましょう。それでは、キワクさんというのはいかがでしょうか。Uh, I think there's a few spell it. Yep, definitely. Uh, just bad luck to name him that. Sugumi cut in. The conversation had come full circle. The light suddenly went out, then flashed back on. There was a dull, heavy metallic echo. At the same time, there was a slight tremor. What's that? Saying that, Sora had held her hands out in front of her. Just ah. then, a strong lateral vibration jolted the floor. The holographic window that Sora had conjured vanished. Sora! It's flooding? I didn't see any signs of that when I made the rounds. The sound of metal giving way accompanied the massive shaking. Scenes from old movies of luxury liners being swallowed by the ocean flashed across my mind. Okay. I reached out for a support pillar nearby. Coco crouched down and she squeezed Pee Pee tightly. Everyone held their breath. A huge shockwave rocked us. The whole floor, or rather the whole of the mew, shook. One fo I thought I would be thrown into the ceiling one second or pulverised into, into the floor the next. The souvenir shop in front of me trembled. The display of dishes in the shop fell to the floor and shattered. The pile of empty cans clattered and gave way. A stuffed animal made a beeping noise as it fell on its stomach. We all, we all steadied ourselves against the shaking. All we could do was endure it. No one said anything. We could hear the squeal of steel twisting. Finally, the sound seemed to get further away. The vibrations also gradually subsided. Sora announced that the second wave of flooding had finished. Still wary, we headed downstairs. We carefully moved forward down the wet and slippery stairs. With every step, the centre scene water seemed to grow stronger. We arrived at Drita, at Drita Stock, basement floor 3. The water level on the corridor reached around my shin. It must have been around six inches deep. 
できないようです大きな浸水箇所は隔壁で遮断したのですが細かいダクトなどを通して今もこの区画に少しずつ水が流れ込み続けています排水ポンプはフル稼働していますが現在の状態より水位を下げるにはおそらく The big hole will have to be plugged. Is that what you were going to say? But, the sea water is falling down the sea, so I can't go to the sea from here. Yes, that's it. We entered the central control room. Sora checked the damage via the Lemix console. But, I was really sorry for that. I was really sorry. 二次浸水の危険が迫っていたというのに皆さんに前もってお伝えできていなかったなんて As she manipulated the keys, Sora bowed her head, looking deeply apologetic It's not your fault, Sora You may have even overlooked the cause of this when we were checking around a little bit ago We're all in this together いいえ、そんなことはありませんそう、あなたは、looking away from the monitor。私の計算と予測がいい加減だったんです。だから。Don't you go trying to blame yourself for this. Everyone is fine, so let's just consider ourselves lucky. With her head bowed in silence, Sora kept working. Finally, her head stopped typing the keyboard. Sora turned and stood up. 状況が分かりました。これから表示します。皆さんどうか驚いたり気を落としたりしないでくださいね。そうだ、そんな風に言われると逆に身構えちゃうよ。あ、すみません。まあ、めったなことじゃ驚かない自信があるけどね。そうですか。それでは。I thought everyone was probably numb by what we had experienced so far. 先ほどの第二次浸水についてですが、簡単に原因を申し上げますと、一度目の浸水の時に被害を免れたいくつかの区画は、強制換気により急激に減圧された状態で水没した区画から隔離されました。しかし、水没区画が内部の水の重さに耐えきれず傾き、隣接した区画とのジョイントに亀裂が生じました。管内外の圧力差により、小さな亀裂からスポイトのように周囲の海水が吸い込まれたために、それまで健在だった多くの区画も短時間で一気に浸水したのです。これが現在のドリッドストックの状況です。明滅している箇所がこの中央制御室です。そして、こちらがツバイトストックの状況です。シリウスレミューの約半分は水の中ってわけね。ドリットには水没していない区画が3箇所ありますこのマップの中心に表示されているのが私たちのいる第8区画ですあれ地図には大まかに2つに分かれた場所が示されてるみたいだけどもう1つの区画は実はシステムの不備のせいで詳細なマップ表示ができていませんが。この第八区画の対角線上にある第四区画の一部も健在なのです。しかし、そこに行くことはできないの？はい、不可能です。どうして？二つの区画を結んでいる通路がすべて水没してしまったからです。距離にしておよそ百メートル。無呼吸状態で
100m 泳ぎ続けるような能力をお持ちになっている方はこの中にはいらっしゃらないでしょう<笑>ゆえに不可能なのですそれにもしも仮に第四区画まで行けたとしても事態が好転するようなことはないと思われますうん第四区画もここと同じなのです浮島へ登るための非常階段はすべて完全浸水していますつまり行っても無駄ってことねそういうことですだったらしょうがないか第四区画のことはこの際忘れてしまった方がいいわね We'll just have to sit quietly and wait for help to come. We、we'll、just have to sit quietly and wait for help to come. Yeah. Well, I guess we could take it easy for now. I left the room and hit the food stand, snagging some cola for everyone. Alright, cola time. I'm gonna toss everyone one. Ready? Oops. Got one, two, three, four, five. I'm one short. What does she wait on this? Oh, don't worry about it. I'll go get one more so you can have, you'll have, you can have mine. Sora smiled. Well, in that case, t o s s out the cola to everyone in order. You, Sugumi, and the kid all took one. And then the kid started shaking his can. Stephen, what do you think you're doing? If you do that, it's going to explode everywhere. So, so no, chicken, no. Did you forget that color is carbonated? Go me. Jeez, I'll give you mine. Here. I switch cans with him. This time, the kid slowly lifted the tab without shaking the can. The color acted powerfully. The rest of us hurried, hurriedly jumped to get out of the way. The kid got a blast of coda in the face. Hey, you're right. Just so you know, that wasn't my doing. Cola. Amine, Cole. Ah, Amo, Kyotsuke Naito. You said as if she was at, if she were at her wit's end. Sonoka, they knew no toxicas no kiats in Yawasete. Do kiats the who knew stared on the car. Yep, so practically everything, all the cola is actually made, made from special gases that are, uh, because they're manufactured at six atmospheres. Oh, I didn't know that. I must have missed it. It was true. Normally, the inside of the Lemieux, com of the Lemieux complex is maintained at six atmospheres using a mixture of gases. Now the floor had become one atmosphere, the gas in the can was still highly pressurized, and the gap in the and the gap in pressure with the atmosphere made them burst when opened. The kid wiped his face with a nearby towel. Hey kid, no one expects you to know that. You you gotta tell Mr. Onidra here these things. Hey, hey, Eagle Kyotsuke Mas. Coco, what's wrong? Coco was embracing Pee Pee and looking and looked downcast. Thinking about it, I realised that Coco hadn't said anything for a while. It didn't seem like her. Hey, are you going to drink your cola? I held out a can of cola in front of Coco. It's a little warm, but it's the best I can do. Coco mumbled this. Jokes? I peered down at Coco. She didn't look too good. She was sweating and having a hard time breathing. Hey, you don't look very good. You came rushing over to Coco, 
push me out of the way. I put her hands on the girl's shoulders. It looked like it hurt more than a little. Pippi was looking up at Coco worriedly. Huh? All right, all right. I got it. You don't have to scream in him, scream in my ear. We were rushing up to to stop some 56 feet above us. Koka held onto my back from behind. You and Sugumi supported her from the sides. Sora led the way, and the kid brought up the rear. We emerged at the second floor emergency corridor. Hey, are you sure we shouldn't take a normal corridor? The emergency corridor was directly connected to the lift below the infirmary. Ooh, we made it. Let's get her up there. Up there. Huh? Oh, alright. Coco lay on the bed. The kid and Sugumi watched all this from behind from beside me. So you, what are you gonna do in this tiny room? Isn't it a little cramp for examining her? The space was so small that with everyone in here we could hardly move. What are you talking about? I tilted my head, confused. Well, I'm guessing he doesn't know what a decompression chamber is for. ガス so, no matter how many deep breaths you take, it feels like you're suffocating. はい。その後、ゆっくりと減圧し、再び地気圧に戻します。圧力差を利用して体内の気泡を再び血液中に溶け込ませ、呼吸によって自然に排出できるようにするわけです。So basically, you make us like a can of cola that won't blow up. Okay, I got it. I left in my hand. Oh, that dash up the stairs <laughs> wore me out. I heaved a breath. Huh? Uh, me? My muscles feel kind of sore and I'm a bit sluggish, but... After you figure out you're in trouble, it's too late. The decompression took process took place over several hours. Coco lay on the only bed. The kid, you, Peepee, and I sat next to her. It was cramped. We were like sardines in a can. There was nowhere to move. I wondered what time it was. 
I took out my PDA and checked. 11.54pm. I was sleepy. Coco was sleeping and her breathing was relaxed. It looked like she was doing better. It didn't look like you or the kid were sleeping, but they sat quietly with their eyes closed. Peepee had crawled under the bed. Sora had sealed the hatch from, from outside and was adjusting the pressure as necessary. Sora, what about you? Don't you need to be treated? Before this process has started, I'd ask Sora this. Yes, I'm getting my body. Ah, that's right. みんなさん、再発の時には耳の音声変換器を一旦外してください。それは鼓膜を気圧さから保護する役割がありますが、再発中は邪魔になってしまいますから。I removed the earphones that that I had become completely used to and held them in my hand. Sora still stood just still stood just outside the hatch window. Sukumi wasn't inside or visible outside the room. She had left just before the pressurization process had started. Where the heck did Sukumi go anyway? Just before the hatch was closed, she had accidentally started talk she had suddenly started talking. Ah. Uh, hey, where are you going? Eh, treatment is more urgent than that. Sugumi, that's irresponsible and selfish. That's not the point. Yosuruni,付き合いきれないの,あなたたちとは. Sugumi ignored you and me and went off somewhere. Sora had reported to us that she was somewhere on the floor and safe. But it still bothered me a bit. And it was Sugumi after all. I was sure she would probably be back in a little while saying something else. That was what I thought, but nearly two hours had passed. I'll wait just a little bit longer. Even as I thought that, my eyelids got heavier and heavier. But still, even so, today really was an eventful day. And then I fell away into slumber. I'm sleepy. The lack of sleep made the echo of the shores of the sh of the shoes scraping on scraping the ground seem louder than usual. As I walked down the emergency corridor, I stretched. You was next to me. Coco and the kid trailed a little way behind us. Yeah, but what time do you think it is right? You th you think it is right now? That's right. That means I've only slept four and a half hours. It's because it's the it, it, it is this kind of situation that we've got to sleep. Our minds have to be sharp. We have to be ready for anything, right? Well. I'm still a bit sleep deprived, so not all my pistons are firing. I think I'm doing about as good as the next guy. Huh? The next thing I noticed, you was no longer next to me. I stopped and looked back. I saw the kid and Coco disappear down a side path to the right. I hurried after the three of them. <laughs> You spoke to me sarcastically once I caught up. I just told you I'm not running at full power. <sighs> you let out an exacerbated smart trot eye and shrugged her shoulders. She also arched an eyebrow as if, igno as if annoyed. <laughs> Hmm? 
Mira. Okay. We entered the emergency stairs from the emergency corridor. We had just been roused in from sleep by Sora, and the four of us shuffled into the control room on the third floor to read the stock. We seemed to have passed through the decompression process without a hitch, as no one had any complaints. Even Coco, who seemed to be, ha who had seemed to be having such a rough time, was. Even the dog seemed in high spirits. They looked even happier than the day before. The water on the corridor floor splashed and sprayed as we walked. You walking next to me had clammed up. I wonder what she is peeved about. I slowed down my pace to walk with the kid. Hey, you got any idea what you what you's all miffed about? The kid answered, grinning. Hey, what are you laughing about? Do you know something I don't? <laughs> okay. If I did, I wouldn't be asking you. You told me to look in the mirror, but... <laughs> The kid get glancing at my face and trying not to smile. <laughs> my face? I like the palm of my hand on my face. But it looked like black ink was smeared there. What's this? I tried to wipe it off with my shirt collar. But it wouldn't come off. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone wrote on him with permanent marker. Or just a pen and most of it's not coming off. <laughs> the faucet was broken, the sink was overflowing with water. I hurriedly washed my hands, and then my face. The mirror in front of me was shattered into so many shards it was useless. But most of the black had come off and come off my hands, so I thought my face was probably alright. That girl. I said it disgustedly and hurried out of the bathroom. I went up to you again. Hey, you! What are you right on my face? Huh? I was asleep. You scrawled all over my face, didn't you? As she walked, you gaped at my face. Don't play dumb with me, you! You're just talking about a mirror! <coughs> you said it! I know you said it! Now what's this? I showed her my shirt collar where I'd wiped the ink. You mumbled this so I stepped closer. <laughs> Suddenly, she grabbed my hand and stared at my palm intently. Oh, I'm reading. Is that what you're into now? あるいは全てを失ってしまうか。一方に進めば金運、仕事運ともに上々で美しい女性と巡り合い、子宝の恵まれ、幸せな家庭を築けるじゃろう。ただし、じゃ。もう一方 
これ以上はわしの口からは言えんのこの生命線の真ん中のところをよーくよーくじっくりと見つめてみるのじゃそこに答えが刻まれておるのじゃからなおっおっおっおっおっおっ Oh, hey! <laughs> Next time I knew you was no longer beside me. I stopped and looked back. I saw the killing Coco vanish into a small side corridor. Oh, jeez, I, I don't believe these guys. I hurriedly chased after the three of them. Sukumi was in front of the control room. She was leaning against the wall, her arms folded and facing down. Yeah. I was curious where she had gone off to the day before. She could at least have given me a hint. Sukumi didn't budge. She stood there with her mouth half open, only blinking her eyes a couple of times. What? Sukumi finally spoke. Then she scowled. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Did you get a good sleep last night? I didn't. That damn room was so small I ended up sitting on the floor all night. I yawned and rubbed my eyes with both hands as I spoke. So what did you do after that yesterday? I then took him his eyes and narrowed into slits as she leveled a steely gla ga glare at me. It was the kind of look that could kill. <laughs> Hmm? Tsukumi shook her head as if she were fed up with me and vanished inside the control room. Uh, absolute worse? Hey, hold on a sec! Sora's voice came from behind me. Uh. The expression on her face appeared more stressed than the day before. It seemed as if her face said that something serious was that were unfolding. Sora paused for a second. Sora looked over all five of us. You, Coco, the kid, Sugumi, and finally me. The cooling fan whirred away in the silence. Occasionally the sound of metal on metal could ring through the room. The five of us waited on Sora's next words. Sakuya, そしてレミュー内の状況を一つ一つ調べていくうちにある事実が判明したのです脱出するルートが見つかったのいいえってことは新たに外部へ連絡する方法がそれもまだです Then what did you figure out? そうですね圧力核壁の耐久強度その限界が分かりましたレミューは昨日もお伝えしましたようにレミューは基本的に飽和潜水仕様の設計をもとに建造された構造物です
つまり内部の気圧が外部の水圧と同等かそれを上回るような構造になっていたということですしかし今や管内の気圧は1気圧ですからレミューの外殻は常に苛烈な水圧の力にさらされているということになるはいところがレミューはもともとこのような状況に長く耐えられるようには作られていない必然的にいつかは限界が訪れることになるおっしゃる通りです So, when is this limit? レミの計算によると今から約119時間後に119時間5日後か Five days. 完全悪化推定時刻は5月7日午前4時30分前後となっていますもちろんあくまでも推定ですから誤差はありますが誤差はどのくらいなのプラスマイナス12時間程度です。Hmm. Everyone went silent, lost in thought. Sora's talk and made it clear that we were in a crisis. But I still didn't know what to make of it. I didn't know if five days was a long time or a short one. We didn't have a schedule, but if we could find a way out, I didn't figure we'll be sticking around five days. Even if we didn't call anyone, a rescue team might be on its way anyway. と断定することはできませんがでも確かにレミの計算結果から判断するとそうなりますねなんだなんだだったらそれでいいじゃんソラさん眉間にキュッてシワなんか寄せさってるからさここはちょっぴりドキドキしちゃったよ<笑>まったく脅かすんじゃないぜベイブってピピもそう言ってるよそうだよねあと1日でなんて言われたら思わず大暴れするかもしれないところだけどまだまだ時間は十分あるんだしそれまでにはきっと誰か助けに来てくれるよね The kid standing next to you agreed He nodded irrevocably as if answering a question The tension in the air gave way and smiles returned to the faces around the room. Even Sugumi, who didn't smile, looked relieved. It was 5.50 a.m. I gave a large yawn. Alright, we're done. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's all of them. I was in a narrow space of the chicken sandwich stand where the cooking equipment was. I was wrapping and placing the freshly made breakfast sandwiches on a tray. Why is it that I have to make breakfast for everyone? Complaining, I took the tray in both hands and opened a small door at a stand. Yu is waiting in front of the shop and snatched a sandwich from the tray. She peeled back the wrapping and opened up her mouth. Democracy, it's overrated. It just means the majority rules. You said it flatly as she munched on a sandwich. 
It was true that it had been an overwhelming vote. I had only been appointed breakfast chief minutes before. I hadn't even run for, off for the office. I know that you're the one in the shadows running the conspiracy. You're sure full of it. <laughs> you already ate it. That's so fast. I set to way you use outstretched hand. I've only made one for each person. If you want another one, you make it. First, I wanted to get away from you. I took the remaining four sandwiches over to the rest area to hand them out. Breakfast is ready. Come and get it. As I cooled out, I set the tray on the bench. Coco came running and splashed towards me. Peepy the dog paddled along the side, along beside her, behind her. All of a sudden, I noticed the kid beside me. Hey, where are Sagumi and Sora? Oh, that again. Same old, same old. I turn my eyes to the three chicken sandwiches left on the tray. What to do? Okay, so look for Tsugumi or go see Sora in the control room. I think I'll go look for Tsugumi. I'll go see Sora after that. I took their sandwiches in hand and left the room. Hey, Tsugumi! I called out as I walked corridors at random. Chow time! <laughs> I knew she wasn't the type to answer to that! Finally, at the end of the corridor, I spied Tsugumi. Oh, there she is. What are you doing here? Himmel was written on the door. Tsugumi wasn't really doing anything. She just stood in front of the door. None of my business, huh? Sure, whatever. This. I held out the, one of the chicken sandwiches to Tsugumi. Breakfast? You're not gonna eat? Tsugumi tilted her head a little and started at the, at stared at the sandwich. If you don't want it, I'll give it to you. Tsugumi indifferently took the sandwich from me. Good. I went, a I went to a lot of pain to make that. If you said you do, if you said you didn't want it, I don't know what I'd. Tsugumi began to walk away without listening as I was talking. Hey, hold on a second. I suddenly grabbed Tsugumi's shoulder. You should at least say thanks. Tsugumi didn't try to turn around. She took my hand off her shoulder effortlessly. <laughs> she let go an annoyed sigh. Sagumi said it in a low voice without turning around. My shrugged off hand floated in the air with nowhere to go. Sugumi repeated the same words again and silently started walking away down the water covered floor of the corridor. Rings rippled out slowly from where Sugumi stepped as she walked away. Just then, the lights in the corridor began to flicker uneasily. I instinctively glanced at the ceiling. A dull growl like 
sound shook the floor. What? What is happening? It couldn't be. Tiny waves formed and the water pulled on the floor. The walls and ceiling trembled slightly. Metal screeched on metal. I could see Sugumi's back down the corridor. The lights clicked and flickered. Sugumi turned and looked back at me. As if she wanted to say something to me. Darkness blanketed us. The vibrations and sound died away. Only an eerie silence enveloped us. Only the emergency light showed weakly. Is this a blackout? Sugumi! I kicked up water as I ran. I ran to where I ran to where shouting. Sugumi, it's a blackout! A blackout! What should we do? Oh yeah, right. So, what should we do? I know, first we should go where everyone is. We cut through the nearby door and came out in front of the kiosk. You wasn't there. I sprinted to the room next door. There was no sign of anyone there either. I scanned the area. My eyes weren't used to the darkness yet. I couldn't see into the corners of the room. Hey, Coco! Kid! You! The echo of my voice was swallowed, vanishing into the darkness. Where could they have gone? My eyes stopped on the bench. On top of the tray I'd on top of the tray I left there, there was one chicken sandwich remaining. I set out one of the sandwiches in my hand. The emergency didn't seem to face Sugumi, who was stuffing her face with the sandwich I'd given her. Sugumi handed me something. It was the balled up sandwich wrapper. Saying that, Sugumi left the room. Jeez, I can't believe that girl. I took up, took the crumpled up wrapper and put it back on the tray and soon followed after Sugumi. In front of the control room. In the far darkness, I could just make out three familiar outlines. Flashing through the water, the three of us walked. The three of them walked over. I looked at Sugumi. She shook her head. Wasn't she in the control room? You sure? Let's check. I pushed the panel next to the door, but the button remained lifeless. Hey, how do you open this? Does the electricity have to be on? Putting on the lever, I pushed the door over to the side. The door opened just wide enough for a person to squeeze through. I peeked, I peeked inside the room. It was pitch black. I couldn't see a thing. Oh, thanks. Taking the flashlight, I turned it on and stepped into the room. The white circle of light appeared on the wall. I saw the light left and right and shined it in the in the corners of the room. The electricity was completely down. Like an abandoned castle, there was no sign of warmth left. There was clearly nobody there. Well, what should we do? I joined everyone and said this calmly. It had been one crisis after another since the day before. I guess we were already used to the situation because nobody had lost it. You tilted her head as she said this. Hmm. Looking at her, then I noticed something. You, when did you change clothes? You was wearing clothes I hadn't remembered seeing. Hmm, I see. So you had a change of clothes. Spilling sauce on your uniform. That's pretty clumsy. <laughs> you scratched her head as if to offset her embarrassment. Anyway, we should be thinking about Sora. Sora 
さんがいなかったらなんで停電したのかだってわかんないんだしそうだねレミューに一番詳しいのは空なんだからうん、alright let's do this You and the kid, you guys go check this, you guys check this floor. Tsugumi, Coco and I will hit the second floor. Okay? Eh? Uh, um. Of course, he'll go with you. I bet it's Peepee's head. Alright, let's go search. Sora! Sora! The three people and one mutt. Myself, Tsugumi, Coco, and Peepee split up once we reach the white stock. The entrance to the neutral buoyancy air elevator. Inside the infirmary. The changing room. <coughs> the security office. The merry-go-round. We search everything, even the jellyfish gondola. Then we retrace our way back in back to the in front of the infirmary. And then... Coco was shaking the flashlight and signalling to me. I had handed it to her before we started searching. How did it go? Any luck? Coco used a flashlight to make a big X signifying nothing found. Nothing. She's not on this floor. What about Tsugumi? Ask by. The neutral points the elevator, huh? Something big. It sounded like Sugumi was up to something solo again. I'll go check it out. Coco and I moved into the room next door to the room next door. There were signs of someone here there. Ahead in the pitch darkness was something rustling around. Sugumi? Calling out, Coco shined the light on the shadow. <laughs> as expected, it was Sugumi. She held up the palms of her hands as she stood up. Coco hurried to turn off the flashlight and rushed over to Tsugumi. I followed over her I followed her, her over with Peepee. -pee. Coco pointed down by Tsugumi's feet. There lay a massive plastic case. I was sure I'd seen it in the warehouse the day before. It looked like a toolbox, but... うん。これは後で必要になってくるの。今はただエレベーターの状態を見てただけ。ちゃんと動くかどうか。扉は手動で開くのかどうか。Sugumi was loads more talkative than usual. Her attitude towards Coco was much nicer than the one she had toward me. It seemed that it seemed to me that Goku's unique personality kept even Sugumi off balance. Sugumi <laughs> glanced at me as she said this. That reminded me of what you had said. Lemieux didn't receive any power from the outside, but it had an in-house generating system. 
She said that the facility pumped up hot water from a thermal seafloor vent using heat from it to operate the power generator. Sukumi right. was finally free from Coco's barrage of questions. Huh, me? Without thinking, I shot a question back at her. Her question was pretty sudden and caught me off balance. Besides, I thought that it was the first time that she had called me by my name. First, there's one thing I wanted to ask you. You said something about the emergency stairs not leading to the generator room, right? Yeah, so what? Map? 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 I pressed on my temple to my finger trying to tease out a blurred memory. Craft work. Map of the third floor is divided into two areas. I can't say, but I remember it exact. I can't really say I remember it exactly, but kind of, yeah. Because this is where she needs to go. The craft work, which is the... Which I think would be the power generator. Or the generator. Between them, how am I supposed to know? There wasn't anything there. The two areas are divided by a block which is now underwater. We can't move directly from the control room area to the generator room area. Oh, I see. To get to the generator rooms area, we have to access the second floor. EI, the egg elevator, the neutral points the elevator. But do you think it's alright? I mean, we haven't even asked for Sora, our Sora's opinion. And we don't know if the cause of the blackout is really the generator. Hmm? Spoiler! Sora is a hologram! With the power out, you won't be able to get her image. ただ、制御室のコンピューターは完全に使い物にならない。well, I suppose so, but... ねえ、どうするの付き合ってくれるわね。たけし、あなたのことが。どうしても必要なの。Oh, that's a creepy look. Those words shocked me. I thought my heart stopped for a second. I really, I really need you. <laughs> They were not words that I'd ever expected to hear from Tsugumi's mouth. Tsugumi stared straight at me. Her intense gaze made me uncomfortable. Uh, you know what? Can I... Ah, here we go, right. Save... And let's do that. That. And actually, I am going to end it.
for today. So, ah, that was, well, rather decent, <laughs> rather decent, even though I uh, ended up snapping a bit at the start. No thanks to this god awful issue, because what I think I'm going to do with that, because I was originally going to submit all the information, all the evidence to the Ombudsman service. But I'm going to get a little bit of verification, see if everything that my ISP recently said is a complete load of utter garbage. And then I'm going to add that to my uh, list of evidence for the Ombudsman service. So, then, well, actually, you never know, I might actually stream myself filling in the whole filing the whole report. So, yeah. Alright, let's see. Is... <laughs> oh, no, I just saw something like that. Yeah, go to the dog doctor and fix your rectal cranial inversion <laughs> this instant. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see what is uh. uh well, Renault isn't streaming yet. Um, oh, no, that's nothing. Uh, right, so it looks like we might be handing back to our directors for the time being. And depending on who who starts first, it's going to be a toss-up between Renault and Fabulous Lomax, whom I will be handing over to in due course. Well, as long as Renault decides to do his usual lady Friday. So, I'll just quickly go over to here, you know, I might actually have to follow all the channels on this account, so as I at least don't have any issues with having to manually type in the names into the host, into the raid and host section. There we go, out of Exodus. Who is celebrating his God knows what birthday? So he says he's 21, but yeah. Who would believe it? Huh. But then again, you gotta think. I'm actually turning 40 in just over a week's time. So, well. I'm actually going to go back to here for a second. And, well, I will be back. Well. Unless I decide to stream the, well, the, uh, filing of my report to the Ombudsman service, I will be back at 11pm UK time with the first of my two weekend Soul Worker streams, which will start with the old Stella Unabel playthrough, well, part 15 of it, where we should, if I remember, be practically finishing the finishing up in Grey City, and then we we'll, then after that it will be off to the Ruined Fortress, and we'll be that closer to catching up with Lily. Although Saturday, Saturday, Sunday will actually be Chiarowell, because I actually did Lily. Last week, so. 
And yeah. Yeah. And it's actually, yeah, it is the Monday after next. So, I will be handing control over to Outer Exodus for the time being until I ha until I know whom is actually starting up their stream first. And I will keep my uh, chatbot open to figure out which one it so as I can instantly change hosts without having to log back into this account and doing it manually. So, this is the Bright Yotaku signing off. Until next time, I'll catch you later.